It's not the child's mistake, it's your mistake. Abortion is not right at all. Abortion shouldn't even be allowed. It's you becoming a murderer. A moral dilemma. It is a sin. What I think the abortion stigma is in South Africa. You wanna go first? I think, uh, wait, what was the question again? <laughs> As Katina's name is, I want to eat a portion by one and ching and dently. I see dently a portion. Abortion in support of Africa started um, just after Black Women Healing Garden, maybe a year after. And most of the requests we get for women is, how can I do it myself? It's not even, can you help me get it? It's, how can I do it myself? Because women are desperate. You know, so some are rejected by men. Some were molested by people they know, maybe the they, they, they relatives molested them and they became pregnant. That one we call it incest, where you'll find an uncle raping a, 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 a nephew, a niece, I would say, and then she, 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 she becomes pregnant and she rejects the pregnancy. Or even the mother would say, I, I don't want you to get a child from your uncle. Others, they even keep quiet because they are scared of abortions and carry the baby to term. And it is only discovered after delivery that this baby belongs to the uncle. But others, they don't want to carry the baby to term. Then they go for back street abortions because of the shame this baby is going to bring to the family. Black Women Healing Garden is actually a Facebook group. It's not an organization as yet, um, which I created in 2016. Um, the reason why I created the Black Women Healing Garden is because I had a conviction that black women needed a safe space to talk about issues that affect them, um, from abortion to sex um, to empowerment. I worked in many departments, but the Department Ekisebeditzing for a longer time was Gaini, where you look after people suffering from gynecological problems, all kinds, infections, injuries, cancers, tumors, abortions. We created a subgroup called Abortion Support South Africa. Um, the reason we created the subgroup was because in the bigger group, um, women were still silent about abortion, women weren't speaking up like, about abortion. Um, and in that group, we partner with people like UK. We have some of the uh, professionals in the group as well to help guide and to assist women. Most of them come in already, procured an abortion from outside, backstreet abortions. S some of them are just abortions that are naturally happening, you know, and then you have some complications and you start losing the baby. So it is not only the septic abortion only, but even those who are losing babies, being innocent. So you look after a woman and you feel for the woman. You need to have compassion and look after the person in full, psychologically, physically, uh, mentally, spiritually, must just look after the person as a whole. So I shared my story on social media and got numerous inboxes of women saying, how can I get help? Can I talk to you? And I felt like I'm one person, I can't be a support structure for so many people. That's how I got together a team and said, can we create a group? And we did, and that's where the group came from. Um, so yeah, I had the same experience of an illegal abortion clinic and it was traumatic.
decision that I follow. According to the word of God, God knew, knows you before you are planted in your mother's womb. And he blesses you and, and gives you the number of days to live. So if I, I kill the baby, it means whatever God was trying to implant into the womb, I'm terminating it before it happens. in 2009 that was my first year of university um, I first went to Joburg Gen which is like a public hospital where I was basically given a date that would be over the weeks I'm supposed to actually have an abortion because I was told there's a long waiting list and basically treated like you know you're not supposed to be here what are you doing here you know so I went back to school and someone gave me a pamphlet of another clinic I could go to um, and I only realized after the abortion that this was actually not a legit abortion clinic. Um, and after that trauma and that experience, I asked myself why at the age I'm at, I don't even know what a legal abortion clinic looks like and what the protocol is. So I set out to say, uh, we need to be more open about this so that women can know, first of all. And I mean, it's very dangerous. I could have died, you know. And some women do die, actually, in these illegal abortion clinics. And there's quite a big market, actually, uh, because women are so desperate. It is, it, is, it is very painful to see a woman coming in, bleeding uncontrollably not knowing what is happening inside, only to find that there, there is something that she used to prick whatever she was pricking, maybe a wire, maybe a straw. And then you are not even aware that there is something inside, but you see the woman bleeding, only to find that there is something tearing the uterus or tearing the organs around that will be discovered in theater when they the person is going for either examination or scraping of the womb, removing the remains of the baby. I just remember screaming and asking them to stop and them carrying on and doing whatever they were doing. Um, I did go see a doctor like a few days after because I wasn't feeling very well, um, but I was okay. Um, I didn't even tell the doctor that it was illegal. I just said I had an abortion and I don't feel well. I'm in pain. Um, gave me painkillers, say there's nothing to worry about, um, just rest and drink a lot of water. I'm pro-life because I believe that y you can prevent pregnancy. You'd rather go for family planning than kill the unborn baby. Uh -uh. I ha my, my belief does not allow me to kill. So I feel that when you do an abortion, you're killing the unborn baby. It's a woman who wanted a young girl, basically, who already already had a child, um, fell pregnant, and she really desperately wanted an abortion. I think she's in the Mpumalanga area. Um, her family didn't want her to have an abortion. Her partner didn't want her to have an abortion. Basically, everybody was forcing her to have their child, and we were the only space she got that said, you can do whatever you want with your body. Um, she was very suicidal for the longest time, um, not wanting to speak to anybody but us. You know when you're that desperate, even though we knew we're not equipped to deal with someone who's very suicidal like that. I mean, we're not psychologists or therapists. Most of us are students. I'm, I'm a full-time working mom. 
Um, so she basically is going to give birth soon to a child she never really wanted. So for me, that's, that's very, like, it's, it's, it's sort of something very emotional for me because an opportunity to get, to, you know, to have an abortion is important for all women. And f the fact that we have a woman who wanted it so badly and couldn't access it because one of her family members was also a nurse at the only hospital she was, had access to, she couldn't even go there. I've heard... Um, that people go to um, like these, they're like posters outside and you go to those doctors and it's, I heard it's very bloody and um, you take a pill or something. And I do know somebody who has had an abortion and because she couldn't afford the baby and I, I was personally um, with her through the whole situation and the ordeal. And I think it's, I mean, it is a bit, it, it can get a little bit scary, but I think the whole, the whole point of it, especially for me, is to always to be able to have ownership of your own body. It is your body, it is your baby, it is your stomach, it is your womb, and you can do what you want with it. Um, I'd say that I know somebody that has done an abortion, but it was more of an illegal thing. So it, was, it got risky because she didn't follow the, the correct procedure. So she went to some guy who sold her pills and she ended up getting her entire womb off. So I think if you know the right people, then go to the doctor instead, not like dodgy papers on the Please, street. Yeah. yeah. I think people go to the illegal abortion places because I mean, with a hospital, you feel judged by like the nurses and stuff. Um, some of them will act like your mother when your mom's not there and they'll tell you what you're doing is wrong or something and it might be a lot for you because already you're making this big decision and someone else is questioning you, you know. It already took so much to get there and it's better to, like it's not better but you might find yourself going there at some point. Well, I've heard of a pill but I don't think that works. Well, it doesn't have 100%. There's also... You can say jokingly, oh, a coat hanger. But that is unsanitary. That is not a good idea. That can have lasting effects. Besides that, just pull out or use a condom. I've heard that people use different concussions. Some add jeek and omo and <sighs> benzene and all those the cleaning materials just to abort the child, the fetus. Some... Um, <laughs> take pills from dodgy places and some just go the correct route. I know a person who's had an abortion. Um, she was my best friend. We met two years ago and she fell pregnant. It was like a week, right? And she, we didn't talk and I was like, this is not normal because we normally talk on a daily basis. And I called her and I was like, what's wrong? And that's when she told me that she's pregnant. I tried to stop her from doing the abortion, but she ended up doing it because her parents had forced her to do it. I had an abortion that was really brutal that, you know, shocked not just my brain, my body as well. I mean, I think it took me three weeks to recover from that. A lot of what I was going through at the time was because of what was going in my mind um, and it affected me physically. I mean, I just continued to bleed and continued to bleed and it was a reminder that, you know, you did this and I continued to feel guilty and feel guilty and it was just a toxic space. So that emotional trauma and that psychological trauma affected my body in so many ways and the other way around. It was traumatic.
I think the role of stigma when it comes to abortion is very really massive, actually. Um, I think uh, the abortion stigma is institutionalized. So to start off with, even the places that are supposed to offer abortions themselves um, carry the stigma, and that's where it starts. They're not judged. I've never seen anyone being judged. I worked there for more than 20 years, but I've never seen anybody being judged. By institutions, I mean, obviously, government itself, for me, I feel like I haven't seen any strong willingness to talk about the abortion issue or even drive an education drive. It's like a side issue. It's, it's in the law, it's, you know, there's, there's a bill, there's, there's an act on it, but there's no really, I've never even heard one politician, you know, speak proudly about the fact that they, you know, abortion is legal in South Africa. That's where we start. Clinics, um, those are institutions, health institutions, where women face one of some of the most brutal um, forms of stigma in actual fact. Spaces that are supposed to be safe, where I'm supposed to go in there and be given what I'm supposed to be given and get out. Healthy and still standing, most women get out of those spaces scarred. Even if you look at how the global gag rule is affecting South Africa right now, a lot of the clinics that used to provide abortions back in the day, like Hilbert Clinic, for example, don't anymore. Um, and you have nurses in the same institutions that are doing it illegally on the side to make money. So that says something. Uh, and the fact that nobody's investigating that is also a problem for me. So I think um, women um, in this country, especially older women and women who've had these experiences, need to rise up and speak up. Because like HIV and AIDS and TB, abortion needs to be, you know, needs activists who are going to speak out and say, look, it may be in the law, but in actual fact, a lot of clinics are closing doors when it comes to that. And who are women going to complain to that this clinic is not offering an abortion, right? Who's going to look at you and say your fight is a real fight? And that's, I think, something that we need to stand up for ourselves and speak out against it. Um, and I know we are doing it in pockets and pockets, but we need to just come together and say no. I would advise younger people to go for family planning because they don't know what they're doing. They must be educated first and understand that when you have sex, it's either you get infection or you fall pregnant. Condoms are preventive. You, 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 can, you can use a condom to, to prevent pregnancy, to prevent infection. But I wouldn't advise a younger person to do that. I don't believe in giving a 12-year-old who does not know anything about sex, advising them to go and take whatever contraceptive that is there for, for women. What are we saying to our children? They can have sex whenever they want to. What is sex? We must educate our children and tell them what sex is and why are they doing sex. You educate your children about sex. I did with my own children. I educated even the six-year-old. I told them that they must never be pressured. And I told them why is a woman having a vagina, why is the woman having a uterus and the eggs? Why is the male having a penis? And I asked them, do you want babies? They all screamed and said, no. Reproductive rights, just like any other woman's rights, are, you know, are, are, are kind of the type of things that um, fight patriarchy in a sense. So I think we still live in a patriarchal society that's about the policing of women's bodies, the policing of young women's bodies. And I think we still, a country that still it's taking its time. Even religion is part of this as well, a big part of the religion and culture. And I think those are part of the reasons why we may pretend to be a free country and have it on law because that's progressive. But in actual fact, the execution and the implementation of that is lacking. We've had talks before. Um, we had a session at a picnic where we were like, guilt after abortion, how do you actually deal with it? Um, only three people arrived, <laughs> which is okay. I think we need to give women time um, to trust and to feel like, you know, um, I can go to the space and I'll still be protected. But the point of that is, for me, I feel like most of the psychological suffering comes from feeling alone and feeling like, you know, you can't share this with anybody. I mean, I remember being at Mary Stopes once and women were in a room all experiencing the same thing, some crying, but no, let's talk about it, you know, and I think for me that there's power in that. The advice that I would give to 
them. <clears throat> be a little open-minded. I think the stigma can be broken if people decide to talk about it more. You have to understand that decisions are made because of where that person is or the circumstances and so you can't necessarily judge anybody. I think everybody has ownership to their own body and I think there are certain circumstances where you just I don't know, can't afford the baby, or you just don't want it. And I think a lot of the time men feel so entitled to the female body that they feel they can make decisions for it, which I think should not be the case. I think we're at a stage um, in life, um, our generation, I think we are able to be woke about these things. I think we are open to these things. And I really think that there is, there is, there should be um, better avenues for people to have abortions so that it's not um, painful or illegal and people don't have to sneak under the covers to do it because then we lose, we lose lives when we do that. So I think when we're able to be open to the matter and to have conversations about it and when people are able to see through their own, I don't know, um, veil of reality, then we'll be able to move forward as a nation. Don't allow any man or boy to decide for you what happens with your body. It's yours. And have fun. Explore. My body, my choice. That at the end of the day, children become women's burdens, right? But when we don't want to have them, it's a problem for society.